Hey, heck, hey, hey. So my name is Thea. I'm a certified personal trainer and I am a Pilates instructor. I currently teach at Wasco Kane's Senior Center. Um, I teach Tuesday and Thursday at 10.45 and I was gonna take a little bit of a summer break because lots of people go on vacation and it feels like, whew, summer is hard to motivate people. But I had so many requests from Edie, Terry, Sue, all of you ladies, <clears throat> Georgia, Kat, all of you guys really wanted me to make a more YouTube videos for you guys. So I wanted to go through a standing workout today. So you don't need anything at all for this and you don't need to be a senior, but this workout is safe for seniors. It's something that will help build your strength, build your confidence and help you feel really good. So <clears throat> I come from a basis of Pilates and your body, you should feel good in your body. I got spilled oatmeal in town in front of me just now, but it's all good, it's all good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. You don't need anything for this. If you feel more comfortable having a chair nearby or standing next to a wall, please do. Um, you can also wear shoes if that makes you feel more comfortable, but I would try it barefoot <laughs> if you wanna. So putting down a yoga mat or a towel or something where your feet just like aren't on the hard ground because you're gonna be standing here for a second, okay? So I want you to take your feet, I want you to line them up right underneath your hip. So right here, we're already starting with some of that balance. I want you to really engage that core, really lift that chest, get it up really tall. And we're just gonna hold it here for a breath, okay? So I want you to think about breathing in through your nose, filling up your lungs with air, using your exhale through your nose to expel all that air. So we're just gonna do some deep diaphragm breathing to start here, so big inhale. Big exhale. Nice. Big inhale. Big exhale. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna bring one arm way up in the air like you're reaching up towards the ceiling. Bring it all down. Reach one arm way up in the air. Reach it all down. Nice. So we're just working a little through that shoulder mobility, through that shoulder strength. <clears throat> A lot of people find difficulty in this move. Try not to keep any tension in your neck or your jaw. Nice, we're just starting off really gentle, really nice. <clears throat> Don't worry, it's gonna get harder. <laughs> so there's a thing in exercise where I want you to push yourself so that you find that level of uncomfortable and you push a little bit past that zone. But I never want you to be in sharp, Right, like we don't want to be in pain. There's a difference between being in pain and being uncomfortable. And we're kind of trying to find that within our own bodies and kind of test that within our own bodies. Nice, so let's shake it all out. Our shoulders are a little bit more warmed up. Let's bring those hands together. I want you to squeeze those palms together and we're gonna do big twists. Really twist it out. Maybe try to keep your hips pointed forward and trying to look over that shoulder. Just warming it up here. Beautiful. I can't believe how warm it has been. I'm here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it has been hot. So hot. Nice. Big twist. And big twist. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'm going to come to the side so you can see this. We're going to do a couple pelvic tucks here. So we're going to take that pelvis, we're going to tuck it back, take that pelvis, tuck it forward. So we're just taking that pelvis, taking that pelvis. So these are a little silly, right? We're trying to feel it. So when we take that pelvis back, right? We feel all this other stuff in the We start to feel that pull in our lower back. We tuck it forward. We start to feel that core start to engage. Yeah. So tuck it out. Tuck it in. Tuck it out. Tuck it in. Nice. Beautiful. In, yeah? So we're creating that power up. So we're not sticking those booties out. We're tucking it in. Really strong core here. My cat says hi. Kind of. She didn't really want to say hi. You're okay, sweetie. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to tuck that pelvic floor. Pull that navel in. 
Now maybe bring those hands to heart center. Maybe you're grabbing your chair here, but we're gonna march one knee high. Bring it down, we'll march one knee high. Nice. So I have been really into virtual personal training. So whether it's Zoom, Skype, whatever, but I basically come to you in your living room just like this, and I get to see you because you're showing me your camera, and we can go through and make sure that your form is on point. So if you are interested in that personalized private care of having a virtual personal trainer come to your house, <laughs> i.e. through your screen, hit me up. There is a form down below that I'm gonna include that you can apply for virtual training. I don't accept all clients. Um, I like to get clients that I really jive with, that I really connect with, which is why I ask you some questions on that form just to see you know, if you and I are a good fit. <laughs> So really strong core here, let that be nice and high. I really believe in the power of movement. If this feels really difficult or you're feeling like a lot of pull through that hip flexor, really make sure you're engaging that core that you're pulling that ankle in. Really try to lift from the top of that knee and don't come up quite as high. So find where your range of motion is. So let me define range of motion. So range of motion is simply how you can move your body currently without pain difference there between pain and discomfort, right? But where we can find that we have that lack of pain zone and we want to work in our range of motion. So work with where we can when we don't feel pain. So maybe you're just getting that heel up and it's just a little lift right now. But I want you to slow it down. So we're trying to find that control, right? <clears throat> maybe it feels no problem to lift that knee all the way up, right? I practice balance probably every day which is why I'm really good at it, but it's because I practice. It is a skill that you can learn simply by practicing these moves, yeah? It, it's not rocket science, it's practice. <laughs> nice, so really engaged core here. So again, finding your range of motion, whether that's your heels only coming up two inches off the ground, whether that heel's going all the way up to the ceiling, whatever your range of motion is, work in that. Because as we work in that range of motion, our range of motion actually increases, right? That's how we increase range of motion is you can only move your arm like this, we'll slowly move your arm like this, you'll slowly be able to move it all the way, yeah? And this is a weird one because this is a, that is rotator cuff. So that's usually what physical therapists recommend to increase strength in that rotator cuff, yeah. You just can't see how cute my cat is sitting on my back. That's so cute. <laughs> Who's a good kid? I'm just a crazy person, it's fine. <laughs> Alright, we're going to put that all down. Let's shake it all out. So we're going to do a little bit of shoulder. So if you want a little bit more of a challenge, I want you to bring those feet together. If you're feeling like, no, I don't really want the challenge, you can sit in a chair or open up those feet a little bit wider, right? Opening up that center of gravity so you have less to balance on. Bringing those feet together gonna make us we will walk a little bit more have to use that core a little bit more yeah okay so we're gonna bring those arms out palms facing up and I want you to just pull them in so here what we're trying to focus on right is nothing else is moving right I'm not leaning forward and back I'm perfectly still and it's just my arms moving you see that nice and controlled nice and slow beautiful nice Nothing else moving, slowing it down. <clears throat> so the purpose of these movements without weights, like we do want to get to a point where we are lifting our body weight, but I like to do these reps sort of without body weight, <clears throat> without extra, because we're trying to build those endurance muscles, right? We want, we want to, especially like as we age, we want to make sure that our muscles can withstand carrying in the groceries, reaching up to the top shelf, like those sorts of things that we just do basically in our normal lives that we don't want to lose that movement, we don't want to lose that control, we don't want to lose that ability to just be normal functioning in our lives. So movements like this are really good for strengthening those muscles. They're not 
I'm going to build muscle necessarily. The, the best way to build muscle is to lift really heavy weights and then get a lot of protein. That's how we incentivize protein synthesis is we give our body that protein so that it can develop those muscles and we're really working and straining those muscles. A great exercise for strengthening your back and your arms is gardening, is working outside. The best exercise that you can get if you're wanting, you know, hey, I want to exercise more is go for walks. Walking is single-handedly the best exercise for burning fat, for creating longevity, for just functioning in our bodies because, hey, guess what? We're made to walk around. Literally, our bodies are designed to walk. So the more we walk, the better. And if walking is kind of tough for you right now, start with a five minute walk, try a seven minute walk, try a 10 minute walk. You don't have to push yourself super far to feel results. And you shouldn't be so sore that it really hurts. If you do one of my workouts and you're like, I'm sore the next day, if you take that day off, that's really a sign from your body that it needs to rest, okay? Okay, so we're gonna hold it here. We're gonna make little circles. So pulling that needle in with really strong core. Amazing. I'm just I'm just taking a break from those legs to move on to arms, and then we're gonna go right back to those legs being excited. There you go. Got the hiccups. Alright, holding it here. Let's go the other way. I like the way my shadows look. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, give me three more, you're doing so good. Noise, I right, hold it here, this arm's tired, you can always take a break, we're going to reach it up. Nice. I do like to go to the gym and lift weights and lift really heavy, but my bread and butter is Pilates. I think Pilates is the best, most beneficial exercise that you are going to do. And I've been a personal trainer now for about seven years, which is crazy. And what I've learned is that with flexibility, which you get through Pilates and yoga, um, you're better able to show up for some of those strength training exercises. So focusing just on moving your body every day place to start if you're looking for strength maybe add in some weights but just do Pilates Ooh, I'm like an infomercial for Pilates all right we're gonna shake it off how's that feeling okay so this exercise is really <clears throat> gonna help you with balance it's really gonna help you with control so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring one leg up now again, working in your range of motion. Our hips are gonna stay forward, right? We're not opening out to the side or anything like that, but you can be right here, right? Maybe that's your hip flexibility right in this moment, and that's an awesome place to be. You don't need to be more than that. Just a little lift here. Maybe your rocks are the way out, but again, <laughs> but again, your hips are pointed forward, that core is strong and engaged. Nice. <clears throat> I'm wearing my Care Bear shirt. I always get described as the Care Bear trainer <laughs> because I'm just sunshine and rainbows and I'm not, sorry. <laughs> I am a Care Bear trainer. It's like the biggest compliment. I'm like, oh, it's so sweet of you. <laughs> Like she's a damn care bear. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, your body is incredible, and anything that you believe you can achieve, you will achieve. If you tell yourself, "Oh, I can't do that," I promise you'll probably never be able to do it, because a lot of it is just belief, right? I, I can go run a 5K. I believe that I could run a 5K if I trained and put in the time, right? internalized beliefs like that are going to grow us rather than, no, I don't run. I could never run. I have bad knees. You're almost giving yourself bad knees because you're ascribing that to yourself. Running isn't actually bad for your knees. One of the best ways 
to develop knee strength is jumping. Jumping is that high impact. It's gonna help strengthen those bones. That's how we strengthen those bones. Um, if jumping isn't quite in your wheelhouse yet, like jumping still feels painful, jumping shouldn't feel painful. If jumping does feel painful, you know, things like hiking or walking upstairs, those sorts of things will help build that strength to where jumping won't hurt, shouldn't hurt. Um, now, if you have any sort of issues or surgeries, right, you should always consult a physician, not a personal trainer who just threw you to telling you to jump. <laughs> you should actually talk to your doctor. But um, I do believe that you can achieve anything with your body. And don't put yourself in a box of, you know, I'm too old or I haven't used it in too long or I haven't done this thing. Like, don't put yourself in that box because I'm telling you, you can do anything with your body you want to do. Kind of distracted from these hip openers. Oh, how does it feel? Let's shake it out. Okay, this next move. What we're gonna do is I want you to kick your butt. Just kick that butt. Oh, you got it. So that core is nice and strong. See, we're getting used to putting all of that weight on that one foot. You feel it? Again, you can always grab a wall if you need. It can be right here. The hand on the wall. If you need it, working up to using no wall. So every time we practice with imbalance, we get better <laughs> at balance. Every day is gonna feel a little different. The time of the day might feel different. I had a yoga instructor tell me to never do balance work after the sun goes down because it messes with our equilibrium. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but balance does feel different at night when the sun isn't up, so it's an interesting thing to think about. <clears throat> like when in the day, does balance feel easier or hardest for you? The other thing is I focus on a lot of movements where we pick up our legs. And the reason for that is I want you to easily step over a stair. I don't want you to trip over a curb, right? I, don't, I want you to be able to get up and out of your bathtub. That's why we work on those motions of keeping our legs and our hips strong so that we can lift our feet over so we avoid tripping. Because the number one reason that people fall is because they, they trip or they don't have control and connection with their legs and their feet. So the more we can develop that connection and keep that connection with our legs and our feet, the safer we are in our movements throughout our life, right? So all this about functional fitness, it's a whole jam. <laughs> But when we're practicing balance, if you just find yourself falling and falling and falling and falling over and over again, grab a chair, grab a wall, slow it down. Because we don't want to be teaching ourselves how to fall necessarily. We want to teach ourselves how to stay upright. So in trying to teach ourselves how to stay upright, you know, work with where you are. Maybe you need a wall right now to feel comfortable so you don't feel like you're just wobbling over the whole time. That's okay then move to like a chair and move to, move to just having it nearby and touching it when you need it and then slowly move it away from it. But don't shy away from using a wall or a chair at first just because you're like, no, I want to do it without it. Find where you're at and let go of that ego, right? That ego of like, well, you know, 10 years ago I could do this or last week I could do this or like whatever your ego is telling you, right? That's your ego telling you, oh, here's some preconceived notion that you must fit into this box rather than listening to your body in this moment of, well, what does my body need? And <laughs> how am I actually feeling? You know, did I not sleep well last night? Am I feeling a little blah? Like I don't really want to exercise. I guess I'll do Thea's workout video. Like maybe it was a chill today. Like that's chill. Be nice to yourself. Let go of that ego. The ego is not going to help you develop, right? <clears throat> we want to develop. Woo. How are those legs? You are incredible. We're gonna do a little bit more arms. So what I'm gonna have you do is take a nice wide stance and I want you to reach up towards the ceiling, keeping that core nice and strong here. I want you to reach it down. So the goal here is to get that, reach it up, real flat back, reach down. So we're not bending or curling, right? Oh, that hurt just doing it. So <laughs> we're real flat, real flat. Training ourselves to use that core when we bend over. Slight bend in those knees. Don't lock out your knees. So reach it up, reach it down. We're getting those marshmallows from the top shelf. We're putting those marshmallows on the floor. Nice. We're getting those marshmallows off the floor. We're reaching them up, putting them up on the top shelf. Why are we moving around marshmallows? And why did I think marshmallows? I don't know. 
you tell me. <laughs> but this is the motion, right, that we do all day, every, every day, we're gonna do this sort of motion, right, of bending over, grabbing something, reaching out, putting something away. So engaging our core, keeping that control in our flat back, is gonna prevent a lot of pain, you can already feel it. Don't round here, you don't need to round it down, right? Keep it open, you're a straight line from the crown of your head to your hips, you feel it? Reach it down, reach it up. Nine. Strengthen the arms, strengthen that back, strengthening your core, see? See, you're a rock star, you got this. Now this might feel a little silly or you're like, you know, I didn't really get like a good burn from this workout. You shouldn't necessarily be sore from all your workouts, right? We don't wanna be, we don't wanna live a life that's constantly sore. That wouldn't make sense for our bodies. So <clears throat> yes, it's nice sometimes to push yourself and get that workout where you feel sore and you feel great, but don't feel like just because you feel like, oh, well, I got a good workout, but I don't feel sore, that you didn't get a good workout. Because soreness is not a marker of a good workout. It could be, but it's not necessarily. The goal is always to feel good in your body. So last move here, we're gonna take those legs nice and wide. Let's bring those arms out and we're gonna twist it. Try to look behind you, try to get a little deeper. Really nice to that spine. This is one of those moves from the Tibetan five rights or whatever that's like, do these moves for longevity, you will live forever. This is one of them. I try to do this every class. I like it, I think it's a good warm up. I think it just feels good. Can you just a little farther? Can you maybe get a little pop out of your back? Some people's backs just don't pop. Mine is like a glow stick. I don't have a dance. Beautiful. Oh, thank you guys so much for playing with me today. Um, I am gonna start back up. Lasso Kane Senior Center in August. So August 16th comes catching at Lasso Kane Senior Center at 1045. It's gonna be awesome. I am traveling a bunch this summer. I'm gonna hopefully have a bunch more YouTube videos up for you guys. I have a bunch of courses that I'm launching this summer. If you're interested in taking a digital fitness course, ooh, ooh. Oh, I didn't really like it. So if you're interested in any of my digital courses, I have a course called 36 Days to Love Yourself Through Movement. So it's 36 days that every day is an exercise and a journal prompt. So you're gonna write about your feelings and then you're gonna work out about it. Um, the workouts in it are a range from everything from breathing exercises to yoga to Pilates, a lot of Pilates to strength training, to there's a little bit of hit in there, and I show you all the modifications, whatever your level is. It's a great workout to add if you're not working out. It's a great challenge if you're currently not working out to start trying to get into working out. It's also a great challenge if you are working out but need just a little bit more motivation. It's something you can add on top of what you're already doing if you are a fitness junkie. So thank you guys so much for doing this little workout with me. I'm gonna hopefully have a new one for you every week. And I will catch you on the flip side. Check out my blog, theamberkey.com. Check out all my weird stuff. You're amazing. I'm sending you so much love. I miss you guys at Lost Volcanes. And have a wonderful summer. Okay. <laughs>